Hello. Um, Hello, good evening, good late afternoon to all of you present. Um, this is the week four uh, lecture, uh, this is the week four uh, doubt clearing session or sample problem solving session for the NPTEL course of uh, code E116. Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering by um, Professor Deva Priyadas. So I'll just quickly share my screen. Hmm. So my screen is just... Okay, so this is week four. Um, let's do a quick recap of what we done, uh, what we did in the last week. So we discussed KCL, KVL. Both are Kirchhoff's laws. One is Kirchhoff's current law. The other is Kirchhoff's voltage law. The first one is based on the law of conservation of charge, and the second one is based on the law of conservation of energy. And then we discuss nodal analysis. So in nodal analysis, we, for a circuit, let's say, let's draw a circuit. Okay, so to all the nodes of this circuit, what we do, we first create a datum node, which is a reference node. And to all the nodes of the circuit, we assign a, a sample voltage, and then we apply KCL to all the nodes, and we solve the corresponding simultaneous equations. Third was mesh analysis. In mesh analysis, what we did, we, for let's say a similar circuit, Instead of solving for nodes, okay, this circuit. yeah. Instead of solving for the nodal voltages, we solve for the currents. I one, I two, and I three. Okay. And we discussed which uh, analysis to use for our, to solve our circuits. And uh, we, we reached to a conclusion that what we look at is minimizing the number of computational requirements. That is the number of equations that we can get from the, um, uh, from, from, our, uh, from the application of the, um, this um, theorem and circuit analysis. So in week four, Professor Deva Priya Das discussed uh, these two concepts in, in depth and also uh, concepts of circuit theorems. So let's dive into them and then we'll discuss some sample problems that will be helpful for you to solve the week four quiz. Okay. So does anyone have any pro uh, doubts in, in, in any of these concepts can raise their hands or can unmute themselves to so that we can discuss? Okay, let's move ahead. Hmm. So we'll quickly discuss what are the different um, uh, theorems that are applicable to solve the to, to, to solve the circuits much more uh, to solve the circuits and reduce the computational um, power. So first thing to note is all of these circuit theorems are applicable only to linear circuits. Now we'll just 
So now you'll be wondering what are linear circuits, right? So linearity is a property of any linear circuit in which the cause and effect follow a linear relation. More importantly, if a circuit for is a linear, it must be homogeneous. It must follow the property of homogeneity. And it must follow the property of additivity. Now, what is homogeneity? So people must have gone through the lecture. So can anyone tell me what homogeneity means? Okay, so homogeneity or even we can call it scaling is a property in which if we multiply a constant to, a, to the input, will uh, the same constant will come at the output as well. So that means if there is some input being applied to some linear circuit, And let's say there's some output. If I multiply K, a constant, to this input, my output would also have a K multiplied it, uh, with it. How let's say uh, V equals to IR, right? Resistors are linear element. We've already discussed. So what happens, let's say V uh, I is the input, current and V is the voltage across that resistor, right? So let's multiply K into I. It's the new current. Let's call it I1. So that means V1 will be what? I1 into R, which is K into IR, which is nothing but K into this V, right? Hence, for a, for a, for a linear circuit, which follows the property of homogeneity, if we multiply, if we scale the input with a constant, the output will also be scaled with that um, uh, with that constant. Next is additivity. Can anyone tell me what what additivity is? No. Okay. Okay, let's say, um, so additivity is nothing but if we, uh, is, so if we sum the inputs, the output would, uh, the outputs will also be the sum of those inputs. So what, what do I mean by that? Let's say I have V1 is equals to I1 R and V2 is equals to I2 R, right? Capital V is equals to IR, we know. Now, capital V, let's say, is equals to V1 plus V2. So that means it is what I1 R plus I2 R, which is equals to I1 plus I2 R. And I is I1 plus I2. That means capital V is nothing but I R. Hence, a resistor follows the property of additivity as well. So if you take a look at it, uh, if you if you see, we are only applying it to the uh, resistive element and that follows the Ohm law, V equals to IR. What if we talk about power? Power is nothing but V square by R. Since it's squared, does it follow the property of homogeneity? Can anyone tell me? If I multiply a constant K with voltage, will my power be scaled with the same amount of constant or will it be a different value? It will be a different value, right? Hence, it doesn't follow homogeneity or additivity. Uh, additivity. Hence, power is not. Uh, uh, so, so hence, this uh, any of these theorems will not be applied to the power in the circuit. Okay. Since we discussed what a linear circuit is, can anyone tell me if I write? something like this my voltage is let's say 2i plus 3 
is this linear? Is the element linear or non-linear? Can anyone tell me if an element follows this particular VI characteristics, is that element linear or non-linear? By the way, if anyone uh, has any doubts, they can raise their hands or even uh, they can unmute themselves. I, I'd be happy to help them. But can you first tell me if this is a linear, uh, if this VI characteristic of, is of a linear element or a non-linear element? Anyone? Okay. So let's scale the input homogeneity. Does it follow homogeneity? So let's multiply i becomes k times i. So we is 2k i plus 3, which is so we can't say uh, we can't scale the uh, voltage with the same amount of constant, right? So it does not follow homogeneity. Sir, if we take this and this feedback, if it follows the equation of a straight line, then also it can be termed as linear. Uh, so the equation of a straight line is a linear function, right? I'm talking about an element, a system. A system is linear if it follows additivity or homogeneity, uh, the, the properties of additivity or, and homogeneity. Even though the function seems to be linear, but the element is not. But all the linear elements follow the Ohm's law so accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, linear elements follow the Ohm law. So is this a linear element? Non. No. Okay. So I'm not saying this is uh, this is not Ohm's law. Ohm's law is what v equals to i r, right? I'm saying this is a VI characteristic of a particular element, of any element. I'm not talking about which kind of element is it, if it's ohmic element or a non-ohmic element, right? I am just asking you if it's a linear or a non-linear element based on the properties of homogeneity and uh, additivity. A, a non-ohmic element can also have a VI characteristic, right? Diode. Diode is a non-ohmic element, right? I'm sorry, who was asking this question? I didn't get your name. So if you could please unmute yourself and if you if you don't understand, please let me know. I, I'd be happy to help. Hello. So did you understand who the one who was asking this question? I guess it was Ranesa. Did you understand? I can repeat. Hmm? Okay. Since it doesn't follow homogeneity, it's a nonlinear element, right? Okay, so it is um, our next okay. It's this superposition. So now let's jump into circuit theorems. Again, it's only applicable to those circuits which are linear in nature, right? What is linearity? I already explained those circuits or those elements or those uh, systems which follow the property of uh, linearity. That is, uh, they follow homogeneity and additivity. So let's discuss circuit theorems. So the first one is superposition. Does anyone have any idea what is a superposition theorem? This is important for me to discuss so that I can, uh, when, I, when I jump into the sample problems, 
people can understand. So if you could just give me a thumbs up that you could understand, it would be explain this. Sir, uh, yeah. In yeah. superposition theorem, it is said mm-hmm. that if mm-hmm. in a linear circuit there are more than one uh, source base, mm-hmm. the total current or voltage due to all the sources will be uh, algebraic sum of uh, voltages or current due to individual sources, replacing other sources by their internal range. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, you're correct. But first, let me uh, answer Vanessa's question. So she asked, VI characteristics explain this. Okay. So let's first discuss what is Ohm's law. So, uh, Renesa, can you please tell me what Ohm's law is? Um, the is. Mm-hmm. So we first state the condition. Yeah, we first state the condition at constant temperature. Potential temperature. The voltage difference or voltage of any element is directly proportional to the will be directly proportional to the uh, status the amount of current flowing through it, right? Is it correct? So we say V is directly proportional to I and to remove this, we say V equals to IR where R is the constant of proportionality valid only at particular temperature. Right? So that means So that means if I draw a curve, which is called the VI characteristic. This curve is called VI characteristics. I I think she went offline. If she went offline, I can't. Okay. Yeah, she's back. So, Renessa, where did you, uh, so where, where, where were you when, when you left? When the connection got disconnected? I can repeat what what I said after that. Hmm. So what I was saying, uh, the voltage difference of any element is directly proportional to the amount of current flowing through it. That is at on at. Can you please? I'm very sorry, but I I suddenly got out of the class. Yeah, yeah. So um, from where do you want me to continue? Can you tell me? I I can't. So I, was your... telling, I was telling the Ohm's law and then I got out of the class. Oh, okay, okay. So Ohm's law is what? Can you tell me once again? The potential difference is directly pro- proportional to the current which is flowing irrespective of some external factors like temperature should remain constant. Yeah, great. Excellent. That's the perfect uh, definition, right? So that sincerely means V is directly proportional to I, right? And to remove that constant of proportionality, we say V is equals to I R, where R is the resistivity, uh, sorry, uh, where R is the resistance of that element. Correct? Right? Yes. Yes. So when I say V equals to I R, now let's draw the curve that it will follow. Since it's a it's a it's a linear, it's a linear variation. If I increases, V would increase, right? So that's how it would behave. And the slope of it is what? R. Correct? Am I correct? So, so the element this that follows this, this, this is, this curve is called VI characteristics because it is a plot in VI, uh, it's a plot in the VI axis, right? So we call it a VI characteristic, right? So the one that obeys this characteristic, this this proportionality, we call it an ohmic element. Right? 
or we can also call them linear elements because it's a linear. But if I say If I draw VI characteristic like this, okay, this is also a VI characteristic. This is of diode. It's not drawn to scale, but you can as safe to assume it's it's of a di this characteristic is of the diode, right? We call them a non ohmic characteristic. Yet they have what we call is VI graph, right? A VI characteristic. They have a VI plot. They have a certain variation between V and I. Now, when I say V equals to 2 I plus 3, right? I'm I'm not talking about the kind of equation that I've written. This equation may be linear. It can be linear, no doubt. But to be a linear element, it has to follow what we call is properties of homogeneity and additivity. So the properties of homogeneity and additivity, I already told you, it's nothing but scaling of in, uh, input, which is which is uh, visible at the output. And additivity is sum of inputs must be equal to the sum of outputs, right? So this particular equation or this particular element, the VI characteristic of this particular element doesn't follow that. Hence, we call it a nonlinear element. I am not talking about the kind of even though the, uh, the 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 equation is linear, the element is not because it doesn't follow these two properties. Hence, because this 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 kind of linearity is important to SNT, uh, to to apply these circuit theorems, that's why this linearity property should be there between those elements. Did I get you now, Renesa? Okay, let's let's talk about superposition theorem. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Yadav already told, it's nothing but um, in a linear bilateral network containing uh, one, two or more than independent more than two independent sources, the voltage across uh, the voltage or it can be current through any branch is the algebraic sum of individual voltage or current produced by the sources by the all independent uh, sources. Uh, which are uh, separately uh, separately acting uh, and like their independent sources should be equal to zero. Very good, yes. Perfect, uh, perfect uh, definition, but still for, for, the, for the convenience of uh, other people, I'll write it down. So it's nothing but current through or voltage across an element or a branch is sum of algebraic, I'm sorry, is algebraic sum of current through or voltage across that element when the independent sources are taken one at a time for any linear circuit. Am I missing something? You can correct me. So that's what we do. So uh, how do we do this superposition? So how do how do we um, basically uh, apply this uh, the superposition theorem to different independent sources? So if we have a voltage source, independent voltage source, we replace it by its internal resistance. If it's ideal, it's nothing but a short circuit since R is zero. Battery will behave as a short circuit and the current hmm. source will behave as an open circuit. 
Yes, because the for for an ideal voltage source, the uh, internal resistance is zero, and for an ideal current source, the internal resistance is. Renesa, the internal resistance is what? Infinite. Sir, for the voltage source, it's zero. Yeah, R is zero, right? If ideal R is zero, hence short circuit. We are replacing it by its internal resistance, right? R is zero. So if R is zero, what does that mean? It's it's a simple wire. It's a short circuit wire, right? Don't worry. I'll just upload a, a nicely written PDF. Sorry, it's ideal. Yes. Open circuit, right? Great. Now, this is what superposition theorem is. Now, let's discuss quickly source transformation. It's also applicable only to linear. Any circuit theorem is applicable only to linear elements. So, source transformation, anyone? So why are we applying the circuit so theorems? The voltage source to current source is practically not possible to convert the voltage source to current source. So whenever there is current source, the resistance when there is uh, broken, that is called a ratio. Okay, so I'll just uh, quickly first first let me tell you why why we are looking at circuit theorems. So um. So uh, the concept is fairly simple. So at some places, what we what will happen is you may not be able to uh, to to apply all of those KC and KV and certain certain stuff because the circuit is not uh, it it it's a, it circuit can be very big. So you need to have certain things in your arsenal or something you can say to quickly uh, uh, to to make sure that uh, that circuit could be written in an equivalent form where it's easier for you to solve that circuit, right? So source transformation, as she rightly said, what we do is we replace the circuit by, uh, what do we do? Uh, we replace um, the circuit by an equivalent circuit having same VI characteristics. That's a more pronounced way to say. Now, how we do it? It's just we replace. Uh, we we we. I'll I'll just quickly show you how we do it. Let's say I have. So, can anyone tell me what is the current flowing in, in this circuit quickly? I is V by R plus R, right? Now, I'd say that since we know uh, in source transformation, what we do is we replace the uh, series uh, resistance, uh, we replace the voltage source in series with the resistance with an equivalent form where uh, with the current source in parallel with the same resistance, right? And the current is given by the Ohm's uh, formula of Ohm's law. So I'll quickly write this. Right? Now, what is this IL current? So let's write it IL since it's name it doesn't matter, but still. Hmm. So IL is nothing but I is equals to, sorry, I into R upon R plus RL, right? Now, both of these, I'm saying, since uh, I'm replacing it with an equivalent circuit, both of these currents should be same, right? So let's equate them. V upon R plus RL is equals to I into R upon R plus RL. That means V is equals to IR 
Hence, both of these circuits follow the same VI characteristics. Okay. And this I is nothing but V upon R. This V upon this R. Okay, now this was source transformation. Uh, what did what more was there to discuss? Um, where's next source transformation? Superposition. Uh, okay, I guess this was all. Uh, we'll discuss Thevenin if uh, there's a question. I don't think there's a question, but and Thevenin was not discussed fully in week four. So once it's done by the instructor, then only I can uh, um, discuss it with you. So let's solve some sample problems so that you're able to solve that week four uh, quiz. Okay. Now, can anyone tell me, uh, so what's the question saying? It's saying that we need to find the value of R such that power supplied by the voltage source and the power supplied by the current source is same. So any, any, anyone who knows how I can solve this equation, uh, solve this uh, question. First of all, uh, any uh, any trouble understanding this whole exercise that we went through of circuit theorems? Any any questions? Anything? Okay, since there are no questions, so let's. So, can anyone tell me how I can solve this question? You you must have looked at your week four quiz where you have a similar question. Anyone? Uh, sir, we can find current uh, mm -hmm. in resistance R. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, uh, current, uh, current in this 20 ohm resistance mm -hmm. by using uh, KBL or mesh energy. Okay, so first, first let's say, so to equate the power supplied by the current source and the voltage source, what we need? We need the voltage around this. Let's call it Vs, right? And we need the current through from this uh, uh, 80 volt voltage source, right? So let's let's apply nodal analysis to these two nodes. Let's call it V1 and let's call it V2 and let's give this as a datum node or a reference node, right? So your, your this is visible to all of you, right? Whatever I'm writing, can anyone just quickly tell me that it's visible? Yes, sir. Hmm. So let's apply mm, nodal analysis or KCL. Sorry, nodal analysis. We are KCL at node one. This node. So, can anyone tell me what would be the um, KCL around this node? It would be V one minus. V1 minus V2 by 10 plus V1 by R and this current is coming into that node minus 5 is equal to 0. So there will be V2 minus 0 by 20. No, I am applying it at node 1. I am applying first at node 1. Is this correct, Renesha? Yes, it's absolutely correct. <laughs> okay, um, so there was a yes. Now I know, uh, so what is the value of V2? Can anyone tell me? V2 is straightforward. There, uh, V2 is already given. What is V2? V2 is 80. Yes, V2 is 80 volt because it's directly connected to that 80 volt voltage source, right? So what would be this uh, equation? It would be V1 by 10 plus V1 by R minus 8 minus 5 equal to 0 or V1 by 10 plus V1 by R equal to 13. Let's call it equation number 1. Now let's apply KVL to this node. So it would be V2 minus V1 by 10 plus V2 by 20 and minus I equal to 0 since I is coming into that node. Is it correct?
It's correct, right? Hmm. So let's rewrite this equation. I would be 80 by 80 minus V1 by 10 plus 80 by 20, right? So this is 4, I is nothing but this 8, 80 by 10 is nothing but 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 minus V1 by 10. Great. So we got these two equations right now. Now I know power supplied by both of those voltage sources is same. So that means 5 into Vs is equals to power supplied by 5 amp source and 80 volt source is same. Right? So that means 5 into Vs is equals to 80 into I. Are you following me till now? Any trouble? Okay, I'll take this as a yes. I'll take this as a no, there's no trouble. Okay, now can anyone tell me what is this Vs? How can I write this Vs? In terms of V1. Okay, first of all, can this Vs be written in terms of V1? It can be, right? Uh, uh, yes, can be written. Hmm. Uh, it can be V1 uh, by R. In current in R over this 10. Hmm. No, no. Uh, don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just continue. Um, V1 by R then? V1 by R is current and then R. So it means V1. And uh, hmm. uh, we have to reduce this. Uh, uh, voltage drop across two the and Yes. So, 10, uh, so what is this voltage drop? Uh, 10 volts. 10 volts, right? So then it becomes nothing but you apply KVL around this loop, right? So what is this KVL around loop? Let's give it a name. This is A1, A2, A3, A4. So KVL around loop A1, A2, A3, A4, A1 is nothing but Vs minus 10 minus V1 equal to 0, right? So that means Vs is equals to 10 plus V1. Great. Now how many equations do we have? We have 1, 2. This is the third equation. And this is fourth. Equating four in three. What do we get? We get let's five over there. Vs is nothing but 10 plus V1. 80 by 5 I. What is 80 by 5? Can anyone tell me? I guess it's 16, right? Okay, now we have three questions and three unknowns, right? We have one, two, and five, uh, one, two, and five equation. And the uh, unknowns are V1, R, and I. So three equations, three variables, the answer could be found out, right? So can someone quickly solve this on a calculator and tell me the values of V1, R, and I? Well, we don't require V1, we just require R. So if you're finding out, just let me know. If you're doing it, let me know. So that I don't have to wait. I can also solve it on my own. Okay, let's do it. So from two in five. So it's nothing but 16i, right? 
10 plus V1 equals to 16. I got V1 as 70. Did anyone get 70? Hmm. So let's equate V1 in 1. So what is it? 70 by 10 plus 70 by R equals to 13. 70 by 10 plus 70 by R equal to 13. So that means Right, which comes out to be eleven point six 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 seven ohms. So the answer is C, right? Eleven to twelve. So did everyone follow this question? If you have doubts, kindly let me know. I'm I'm. And if someone left in middle and wants to wants me to. Um, just uh, just tell you again. Let me know. I can do that. It's not it's not difficult for me. Any doubts? Okay, let's continue. If my pace is more, let me know. I can uh, reduce the pace too. Let's do second question. So, can anyone tell me how this question can be? Sir, I couldn't solved? follow them. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll. Okay. First of all, what this question asks us is just a second. Hmm. So, this question is asking nothing but we need to find R in such a way that the power supplied by the 5 ampere current source is equal to the power supplied by the 80 volt voltage source, right? So what we did, we applied remove all of this. Hmm. So we took two nodes. This is node 1 and this is node 2, right? And we assigned V1 and V2 to these two nodes. Okay, she left. Okay, but then I'll continue. So it's um, so what we did, we applied KCL at v, uh, this node one, right? So we got this following equation, right? Then we know we knew V two is nothing but eighty volts because it's connected directly to that uh, uh, reference uh, voltage source and the reference node, right? So V two is eighty volts. So we equated 80 volts into our equation, which we came up with from the KCL at node 1. And we uh, reduced it and we got V1 by 10 plus V1 by R equals to 13. Equation number 1. Right. Then we applied KCL at node 2. So what would be the KCL at node 2? Can anyone tell me? So it would be the, let's say these currents are going and this is I is coming, right? So, what is the uh, equation uh, for uh, this uh, this current? Let's call it I1, I2. So, how will we write I1? I1, we can write it by V2 minus V1 by 10. And I2 is V2 by 20. And then we equated V2 as 80 volt and got I in terms of V1, which is 12 minus V1 by 10. Now, since the question stated that power supplied by the voltage source and the current source is same, we used that to our advantage and we wrote this equation, equation number three. Now, since we require to find this voltage and we knew this, this voltage is nothing but 10 volts and this voltage is V1, right? So we wrote KVL 
across these nodes a1 a2 a3 a4 and a a1 so we came up with this uh, equation vs is equals to 10 plus v1 then we equated this equation into uh, in 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 the, into our uh, third equation we got this equation now we know we have two uh, three equations and three variables and we can easily solve it so we solved those equations system of equations and we got v1 as 70 volts equated into into the first one and we got r as 11.667 volts so i hope you could have you could follow even if you couldn't i'll upload this uh, lecture on youtube you'll get the links and you can follow it from there so now let's solve the circuit so can anyone tell me how we can solve the circuit Should we use mesh? Should we use nodal or both? Yeah, nodal is better. So what are the two nodes? This one and this one. We apply a datum node. This is at zero potential. And let's write KCL. at node one. So what would be the KCL at node one? It would be V1 minus 20 by four plus V1 by four plus V1 minus V2 by two. And one more equation would be there. Can anyone tell me what could it be? I haven't written across this current, this current. Uh, Dr. Yadav, can you tell me, please, uh, how can we write uh, nodal? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, across node 1, we are doing. And for node 1, it is V1 minus 20 by 4 plus mm -hmm. 1 by 4 plus 1 minus 2 by 20. And mm -hmm. plus, you can say V1 minus 10 by 2. V1 minus 10 by 2. But uh, it's not connected to reference, right? Uh, it's connected right, to this node. Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. It's uh, V1 minus 10 minus 5. Uh, V1 minus 10 minus? V2. I could, oh, V2. Yeah, great. It's V1 minus 10 minus V2 by 2. So we got this equation. Let's Let's rewrite it so that it's easier for us. So V1, 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus V2, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 5 and minus 5, right? Please solve this uh, too so that if I if I make a mistake in between, you can correct me. Otherwise, I would, have, uh, I would find it very difficult to find the mistake. Is equals to 10. So we got this equation by applying KCL at node 1. Let's do, do it across node 2. Now, what would it be? It would be V2 minus... Would it be V2 minus 30? It would be V2 plus 30. Yeah, it would be V2 plus 30 because it's in opposite polarity. So V2 plus 30 plus V2 by 3 plus V2 minus V1 by 2 and plus V2 minus V1. Would it be plus 10 or minus 10? Plus 10, right? Equal to 0. Let's simplify it a bit. V1 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 plus V2 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2 plus 5 plus 5 equal to 0 minus V1 plus 2 plus 3 6 5 5 by 6 is V2 minus 10. Is it correct what I've written? 
it's 5 by 6 and 1 by 6 is 6 by 6 or 1. Yeah. So can anyone solve these two equations and get me V1 and V2? Yeah, yeah. Did something wrong somewhere. V2 plus 30 by 6, V2 by 3, V2 minus V1 by 2 plus V2 minus V1 plus 10 by 2. Yeah. Hmm. Did anyone solve it? Yeah. What did you get? V one is zero and V two is minus ten. Seems a bit wrong. Let's solve it. No, V1 is 0, then, yeah. It's okay. Just a second. Did we make a mistake somewhere? V1 minus 20 by 4, V1 by 4, V1 minus V2 by 2, plus V1 minus 10, minus V2 by 2. Yeah, correct. So it would be 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 2, and 1 by 2. What is it? 1 by 4, 1 by 4 is... by 2. This is correct. Then it's minus v2 by 2 and minus v2 by 2 which is minus v2 and this is 10. Right? And then v2 plus 30 by 6. v2 plus 30 by 6 plus v2 by 3 plus v2 minus v1 by 2 minus v1 plus 10 by so we got V1, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, which is 1, 2, 2 1 by 6, 1 by 3, 1 by 2. There is one more 1 by 2, right? That's why I told you to solve it. <laughs> no worries. So 1 by 6, 1 by 3, 1 by 2, and 1 by 2. Hmm. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. It's 3 by 2. Yeah. Sorry for the mention mistake. So can anyone solve it again? I do it one point five minus one ten minus one one point five minus ten. So V one comes out to be four volts and V two comes out to be minus four volts, right? Now we are required to find the current. Uh, so we are required to find this current, right? Let's say that the direction is like this. It's it's going into that node. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Yadav or anyone who can tell me, what? how could we write this current exactly? How can we write this I current? We just rotate the nodal equation. Same way we can write for this also. It's nothing but V2 minus V1 plus 10 by 2. Right? So what does it come out to be? It's minus 4 minus 4 plus 10 by 2. It's 1 ampere. So that means 
power supplied by the 10 volt power by the 10 volt voltage is what 1 into 10 and the direction of current that we chose is the direction of the current that we got right so that means this 10 volt source is supplying 10 watts of energy so the answer would be 10 watt delivered so anyone who didn't quite get this question i am willing to repeat so please let me know Dr. Yadav, you are unmute, but I'm unable to hear you. So you can hear me, right? Everyone? Yeah, yeah. You're audible now. So do you have any uh, doubt? Oh, first question. This is the answer of the first question. Yeah, 11.667 It's between C, 11 and 12, right? So you got this answer, right? 11.667? Yes. Yeah, great. And this question, did you get this question? Second question? Okay. Okay, anyone who wants me to repeat? Renessa, you left in between. So if you want me to repeat, I can repeat for you. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly do it. Otherwise, I will see. Okay, you'll see, you'll see the YouTube video, right? So I'll just, uh, we'll move on to the next question. Otherwise, other people will get bored. Okay. Now, who can tell me how can we solve this question? But just don't give me nodal analysis and current analysis. Tell me how can we reduce the complexity of the uh, equation uh, questions as well. Anyone? One uh, sorry, Renessa, I'm unable to hear you. Your your voice is breaking too much. Yeah, yeah, yes, Dr. Yadav. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. uh, okay. Okay. Let me let me. Let's 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 do it one one. Uh, let's let's tell you. How, let's uh, I'll tell you how to do it. Let's let's jump into this question. So this is one node. These two are this the second node, and this is the third node, right? But since I, my number of equations would be more if I keep it as is, what can I do? I can simply uh, do a source transformation across this these two elements. Okay. So let's do it. So what would be the um, circuit? It would look like this. So by this question, you if you don't want to use uh, source transformation, you could use. But I want to do source transformation so that you could understand what source transformation is. But if you don't want to use source transformation, it's up to you. Okay. Then, and now. So can anyone tell me what would be the... Uh, Equivalent uh, so a circuit if we if I do source transformation between these two elements. Yeah, it would be current source. Yeah. It would be like this, right? So this is I two, and this is I one. So shall I do it across this node as well or uh, so let's let's keep it as is. I mean this node is one only, so why 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 do it? So let's let's apply nodal analysis. Hmm. Hmm. 
So these are at datum node zero. So across, so we know V1. V1 is what? Can anyone tell me what is V1? Yes, V1 is 30 volts. Right. So let's write KCL at node 1. What would it be? Yeah, someone was saying something. No? Okay. So let's do it. It would be V1 by 10 plus V1 minus V2 by 1. Just this, right? Okay. Hmm. Is this this, right? Is this correct? Or is there any other circuit equation that I'm missing? Okay. Let's also apply KCL at node 2. So what would it be? It would be V2 minus V1 by 1. Plus V2 by 2 minus 20 since current is entering plus v2 plus 40 by 14 it's done right anyone any doubts yeah yeah tell me so uh, can you can you can you yeah so i'm so your voice is breaking a bit can you be a bit loud mm -hmm. If you're, I'm unable to hear you, you're, you're on unmute, but I'm unable to hear you. So? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're audible, yes. Is gone? Uh, excuse me, sir. I am audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah now you're audible. Uh, I am saying, sir, for node one, it appears mm -hmm. there are uh, three branches or three elements. 30 volt okay. battery. Then 10 mm -hmm. ohm resistance and 1 ohm resistance. Yes. So there should be current in all the three, sir. Yes, there can be current in all the three. So the, uh, you uh, you have written uh, current in this 10 ohm resistance as V1 by 10. Mm -hmm. and current in 1 ohm resistance as V1 minus V2 by 1. Yes. Uh, we and, should write and, and, uh, yeah, current in yeah. battery also. Yes, yes, yes. I was just looking if someone would tell me. But otherwise, if if this equation would have been the one that we could have written, then I could have simply found out what V2 was and I wouldn't have uh, required anything else to find, right? But still, I wrote KCL at node 2. So what would it be? So the current is entering this node, it would be I. Is it correct now? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So now tell me if this equation is correct. Uh, just doing it. Yeah. Uh, you are asking for the second one, sir. Yeah, KCL at node two. Uh, uh, little bit down. Uh, please down the slide, sir. Uh, circuit okay. is not visible. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Now it. Uh, it is. Uh, V two mm -hmm. minus V one by one plus. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to hear you. Sir, one other way will be that you could have taken all the current sources at one side and the resistances on the other side. 
then it would have become easier. Then 20 ampere and 10 ampere, it would have reduced to 10 ampere, and then resistances at the other side then would have followed like through. Okay, Ohm's okay, okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me write it again. Just a second. Now, see, Renessa, what you're telling me is that I could have simply just subtracted 20 from this 10, right? You're, that's what you're telling me to do? Yes, sir. But are these two nodes at the same same voltage? No, no, they are at the same voltage. So, that is... so we can't do it, right? We can't do it, right? Great. So, since we can't do it, what I did was... I thought I'll remove everything so that you're able to tear it on. So, so what I did was, I told I want to reduce the number of uh, equations that I get. So, what I did, I told you apply source transformation across these two uh, elements. So what you did, you did apply this source transformation. I shouldn't have removed everything. I just wanted to, okay, no worries. So what you did, you applied source transformation over this. You got something like this. So others who are joining late, don't worry. I'll be uploading this lecture on the YouTube and you can follow from that. I did one mistake. Okay, hmm. this is okay. Now, uh, what would be this resistor? This would be 4 ohm and this would be 40 volt voltage source, right? Now, how many um, nodes I have, Renesa? This one, this one, this one node and just this, right? So, there is a request. I don't know whether it can be put forward or not. Wait, can you hmm. transfer the platform from the rest of the classes rather than Zoom? Okay, so on Microsoft uh, Teams or Google Google Meet. Yeah, no. So um, so IIT Kanpur provides us with uh, with this uh, Zoom Zoom platform, right? So I am taking classes from that. So now, even if I could change, I would have to go through a long process where I would have to. Uh, they the PMRF team at NPTEL won't like it, so they have strictly told us not to change platform. So do you have trouble with Zoom platform? Yes, because when I'm doing the other classes on Microsoft Teams and Google Meet, that is going perfect, but the Zoom one is not going perfect at all. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I so also I... feel like same, sir. I also feel like same. There is problem Teams. with this platform. Okay, so... Okay. So if you want us to write any application or mail to the... No, to no, any no, no. No, no, no. I can, I can do that. I can do that. It's just that I didn't want to go through that whole process of transferring this. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll transfer this to uh, Google Meet, and then we can uh, we'll uh, from the next session onwards. From the next session onwards, I'll uh, message them and transfer this platform to Google Meet, and then we can have our classes over there. But for this classroom, you have to you you, you have to stay with me. All right. I mean, I'm sorry, but uh, you have to stay with me. No, it's so. Not Okay, so let's do it one more. So I wanted to tell, uh, so I wanted to, I did, erase, erased all of this because I wanted to tend to Renessa's doubt. So this is one, this is the second node, right? Now, um, uh, where was I? Yes. So can anyone tell me how, uh, so yeah. So can anyone tell me what would be, so tell me, is KCL at node one required? Just this question. Can I do away Sir, with KCL at Node required. 1? It's not required, KCL right? KCL at Node 1 is not required. So what we'll do, we'll straight, straight go to KCL at Node 2. Right? What is it? It's V2 minus V1 by 1 plus V2 by 2 minus 20 plus v, V2 plus 40 by 14. Is this correct? Am I missing something? I mean, you can tell me. I'm also, I can also make mistakes. I, I, I haven't solved all of them. I just went through them. 
so i'm solving it with you i wanted to solve it with you so that you can solve and we can solve it side by side and wherever i make mistakes i'll tell uh, I, you can tell me and where you are making mistakes or you have doubts i can tell you so let's do it so is this correct kcl that i have written or is there any mistake i hope it's correct right now we know v1 is what 30 volts so one more problem that i have with google meet and uh, teams i'm sorry i don't have the access to it so google meet i have to record it through obs and i have a system which doesn't have too much storage so the when when we record the 2 hour uh, 2 hours class it will take a lot of storage so so that's why i didn't want to go through that trouble but since your 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 uh, the zoom doesn't support your cell phones or, or your devices we can transfer it i mean it's convenient for me anyways i'll just use some something else okay so v1 is 30 right so can we write this so can quickly someone solve for v2 and let me know the answer So is this correct? I got V2 as 30 volts. Is anyone getting the same? Everyone's following this, right? I, I'll, I'll just go through it once more. So to reduce the number of equations, if I, if I did this, I would have to use this node as well. But since I use source transformation, I can only apply it to a single node, which is this node. And I could simply get uh, V2 out of it. And from V2, I know V1. And then we can solve it to get the answers, right? Yeah, Renesa, V1 comes out to be 30. V2 comes out to be 30 volts. And since V1 is also 30 volts, so now tell me, the potential of this node is 30 volt. Will any current flow, uh, what would be the I1? What would I1 be? Dr. Yadav, you're on um, your unmute, but I can't hear you. I got the answer, sir. I got. Oh, you got yeah. So, uh, what would be the I one? Can anyone tell me? Since both are, both the nodes are at similar potential, I one would be zero, right? Since both the nodes are at similar potential. Am I correct? Okay, so what would be I2? Can anyone tell me what, what I2 would be? So I2 is nothing but V. Sorry. Okay, I2 is what? Minus 40 minus 30 divided by 10 plus 40. Is it correct? Just a second, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. V2 is hmm. oh, sorry. I2 is nothing but thirty plus forty by ten plus four. Whole minus. Now it's correct. That's what I wrote. Ah, so what is the answer? I two. Anyone? Hmm. 
the answer comes out to be yeah no okay so the answer comes out to be minus 5 amperes right no minus 5 is not the answer sir excuse me for this current i this i current can you write the formula for this i current uh this sir we write this uh, b2 plus uh, this is 40 divided 14 mm. b2 right plus. yeah so now i and i2 are uh, reversed in direction so what would i2 be i2 is simply minus i right that's what i wrote Uh, you get actually, it. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, you want to find the okay, okay, okay. Yes. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Now we are required to find I1 minus I2, right? This is what we are required to find. Now I1 is 0 and I2 is minus 5. So I1 minus I2 is positive 5. So the answer is A. So anyone who has trouble with this uh, equation, please let me know. It's it's, it's in your assignment as some something like this is in your assignment as well. So it's, it will be easier for you to solve. Anyone? So Dr. Yadav, you you got it right? I got it, but it is a very good question. Yeah, it's a good question. And uh, Renessa, did you get it? She's having trouble with Zoom. So I'm, I'm doing one I'll, I'll shift it. Okay, so next question. So you're finding these questions good, right? So that's what I want. Hmm. So how would we solve this question? Does anyone know? So what is in this question? Where we are given a bridge in which there is, it's kind of a Wheatstone bridge. With their, uh, where there is 25 volts and 5 ohm in series and it's series in two different places with 5 ohms in two different places with 20 ohms in the middle and we are required to find I0 which is the current flowing through that 20 ohm resistor. So how would we solve this question? I think no, uh, mesh analysis would work, right? Since all of these resistors are same and the voltage sources are also similar, the, the mesh analysis would have similar equations. So you won't have difficulty in solving that. Or does anyone have any other option of solving this equation? I'm, willing, I'm open to anything. Okay, let's solve it using mesh analysis. Let's call it I1, let's call it I2, and let's call it I3. So for mesh analysis, what we do? So what would be the um, equation around this loop where I1 is flowing? It would be 50 minus then I1 plus just minus 5 I1 minus I2 
एन माइनस फाइव आई वन माइनस आई थ्री इज इट करेक्ट consider loop with i2 current okay so for loop with i2 current similar equation you can write we can write 25 minus you are unable to so what you can do is you can take a screenshot of this equa uh, this 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 uh, uh, okay okay now so you must be having difficulty in writing equations right so uh, can you you can take a screenshot and then write equations with yourself right otherwise i have to go up uh there's something i can do i just write these equations it would be 25 minus 5 i2 minus 20 i2 minus i3 and minus 5 i2 minus i1 right so let's write minus 5 i2 minus 20 i2 minus i3 and minus 5 i2 minus i1 Correct, right? You can uh, uh, any time you can just unmute yourself and let me know if I'm going wrong in this song. Twenty five minus this would be thirty i two plus twenty i three and plus five i one equal to zero. So it would be minus five i one minus plus thirty i two minus twenty i three. To twenty five. So we got our second equation. Let's solve a third equation. It would be twenty five minus five i three minus twenty i three minus i two and minus five i three minus i one. Right. So it would be. Minus five i one minus twenty i two plus thirty i three equal to twenty five. Right. So we got three equations, and we we have three variables. So can someone quickly solve these? Can someone quickly solve these three equations? I will also do that. फंक्शन ऑफ दट इक्वेशन सोल्व राइट और यू कैन गो ऑनलाइन देर आर मैट्रिक्स कैलकुलेटर्स एंड इक्वेशन सोल्व टू यू कैन यूज दैट एज वेल I hope you are allowed calculators in your exam too. So, so it's better to purchase a scientific calculator and use that to your advantage. Otherwise, using Kramer's, you will take a lot of time in solving equations. I mean, you will take very long time. Here, you are working with linear elements. I mean, real uh, values. When imaginary numbers would come into picture, you you will find it difficult. Anyways, you can't use equation solver over there as well. But still. It would be a much better option with matrix. Yeah, so it would be twenty minus five minus five and fifty, and then we have minus five thirty minus twenty and twenty five. So I hope you all know how to solve it in a calculator, right? I one is five amperes. I two is also five amperes. And I three is also five amperes. Nice. 
So since I one, I two, I three are all same, and what what is I not? I not is nothing but I two minus I three, and I two and I three are same. So I not is zero, right? So did everyone follow this uh, question? It's very simple. I use mesh analysis. And then I got three questions and three variables used in equation solver and solved it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, say by observing only that I zero is in because this is the balance bridge. Okay, balance switch from bridge, right? How can I? So see, um, I'll tell you one thing. It's it looks it's a Wheatstone bridge. But a balanced Wheatstone bridge, we talk only if at all of these arms there are resistors, right? Here there are voltage sources. So yes. I don't know. I I don't know uh, if we can still call it a balanced Wheatstone bridge or not, since there are voltage sources too in that arms. But since I not is coming out to be zero, I hope it's 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 a it's a balanced Wheatstone bridge. But then again, I don't want to call it a Wheatstone bridge right now, since uh, yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. Uh, so, can you write it in the chat box? I'm sorry, Ranesha, but <laughs> I'm unable to hear you. Hey, you can call it a balance with Eastern Bridge, but uh, since I don't, I, I, I'm not familiar if it's a Wheatstone Bridge or not, I, I can't comment on that. But yeah, it looks a balance with Eastern Bridge since it has similar uh, resistors in its arms. We could have used to solve the, uh, using that also, but I wanted to use mesh analysis so that uh, you are familiar with the concepts too. Yeah, Renisa, you were saying something? Hmm. Uh, yeah, Dr. Yadav. Okay, sir, it's clear. Ratio 5 is to 1 is also maintained. Yeah, I, uh, 1 is to 1, yeah. Yeah, I know, but uh, as I told you, I won't comment on that since I don't uh, have any. Um, it looks a balance. It's it is a Wheatstone bridge, but I don't know if uh, it has voltage sources in its arm. It could still be called a Wheatstone bridge, right? So I don't want to comment on that since I don't have any expertise in that field. But if you want to solve it, yet if you don't know what the circuit is, you can straight away use mesh analysis and can you can get the answer. What if I give you a galvanometer, right? So you should focus on the process more than what kind of circuit it is yeah otherwise you'll 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 uh, you you can mess up somewhere i mean if you want to call it a wheatstone bridge yeah it looks a wheatstone bridge but i don't want to comment on that hmm. yeah so uh dr yadav you were saying you got it right yes so the answer is none of the above let's let's solve one more question one two three four five yeah, this is a good question. So, um, it is a voltage divider circuit where there are different um, loads connected to it. It has a 24 volt battery and there are loads R4, R5, R6 with 24, 18 and 12 volt uh, voltage different uh, potential. And the currents that they are carrying are 8, 4 and 2 respectively. And we are given that R3 has one fifth of the total divider current. And now we have to determine the efficiency of the voltage divider circuit. So does anyone have any idea how we can solve this equation? How we can solve this question? Anyone? It can be right, it can be wrong. We're solving it together. Okay. Since we are required to find efficiency, what are we required? We are required the amount of uh, power that is being input into the circuit and the amount of power the load is getting, right? And it if it's one uh, and uh, efficiency is nothing but p out di uh, sorry p in divided uh, sorry, yeah p uh, out divided by p in right in in terms of percentage. So now p out is nothing but since we are given voltage difference and currents, we can easily call p out. P out is nothing but 24 into 8, this this is the current flowing into this, and then 4 into 18, and we have 2 into 12, right? 
So what is P out? It's 288 watts. Now we require P in. P in is what? The current, oh, this, this is not visible here. The current that the battery is supplying, right? What is the power then? It is 24 into I watts, right? Now, all we need is to find this I. So can we find this I? Can anyone tell me how we can find this I? It's a very good question. I mean, you can, you will get mm, mm, these questions in your quizzes too. If you don't know, you can just let me know. I can straight away start. But if, if you want to try, I'll be happy. Yeah, Dr. Yadav, do you have any idea? Okay, let's, let's give you hints. So let's call this I1, let's call this I2, and let's call this I3, right? So how can we write I? Let's start with I3, uh, sorry, I. So I is divided into I1 and 8 ampere, right? Then I1 is divided into I2 and 4 amperes. And sim similarly, I2 is divided into I3 and 2 ampere. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So let's equate all of this. So what would it become? I is equals to I1 is I2 plus 4, which will, which will become 12. So it would be I3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, right? I is nothing but I3 plus 14. So you understand, uh, so you, you, you understand till this point, right? What, what, what I just did. Any questions? So I'm just using the division of current between different elements and then equating it all together, right? So I coming out from the battery is being divided into I1 and 8. I wrote this so equation. Can we find out from the smaller part that is the resistance? Um, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm unable to hear you. Can you write it in the chat box? I'll, I'll reiterate. So what I did, I need to find this I in order to find what is the input power, right? So I'm just simply using the current division. So I is being divided into 8 and I1. I wrote one equation. Then I1 got divided into 4 and I2. I wrote that equation and I2 got divided into I3 and 2. Equated them all together, found that I is nothing but I3 plus 14. Now, in the question it's given, the current flowing through resistance R3 is one-fifth of the total divider current, right? So that means I3 is nothing but I by 15, right? Let's equate it in this equation. So what will we get? We'll get I by 15 plus 14, which will be 14 by 15 I equal to 14. So I comes out to be 15 amperes. So everyone follows, right? Is this correct? I hope it is. Yeah, so now we got I, so P in, what is it? It's 24 into 15. It would be 10 to 40 to 40, 120. It would be 360, right? 360 watt, okay. 24 into 15, 360 watt. So efficiency is what? I already told you, P out upon P in into 100%, which comes out to be 20 divided by 360. 80%. Hmm. Let's take your questions one by one. Yeah. Who has doubts? Hmm. Who has doubts? Dr. Yadav? Yes. Yeah, you got it right. Renessa, did you get uh, what I just did? 
transfer, I was starting by finding out the resistances, but that's not needed. Okay. So how can you find the resistance for that slot? Uh, so you're saying we can find R1, R2, and R3 and then do it? Yes, there will be a lot of complications in that because I found the smaller portion, then the larger portion, then the outermost, but it didn't come out the answer. Back. But you will you will be using a lot of competition bar, right? Here, you what you did, we just used uh, the uh, current division and equated it all together and found out the answer, right? So this is a lot easier method. Why are you going the hard way? And I don't think so. Even if you find the resistances, you still need the currents, right? So why would you go that long way? If if your end goal is still to find the currents, then you can straight away use this, right? Why go through the pain of calculating resistance, dividing it by potential, getting the currents, and then equating it to currents? So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. for writing I? Uh, I is equal to hmm? I is equal to I by T. Uh, so what you're saying, how did I write I is equal to I1 plus 8, right? No, no, I is equal to I by uh, something is, uh, 15. I by 15. Yes, yes. Yeah, how so it's, yeah, yeah, it's given in the equation. Current flowing through resistance R3 is one fifth of the total okay, divider okay. current. Yeah. So can you repeat once efficiency question? Yeah. See, efficiency is what? So it's the so if I'm inputting some power, some amount of power, how much is it getting converted into that uh, use into that useful work? So right. Power useful. output minus power input by power output into hundred percent. What 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 did you just say? It will be the power output minus power input by power into 100 power output minus power input divided by power output into 100 it's it, i don't think so that's efficiency efficiency is how much amount of power is getting converted into that load right so we are supplying a load load is given by r4 r5 and r6 right so we know the power uh, basically because we know the voltage difference and we know the current so the output power we know. Now the, we require input power. So how much amount of input power is converted into that output power is what we are con considering. If the efficiency would have won, we would, we would have said the amount of power we are giving input to that system is all getting converted into the load. Load power, right? That means whatever we are supplying to the system is getting converted into the load power, right? That means efficiency is 100%. All of my power is getting converted into useful work. Mm -hmm. So whenever we connect a load, we call it a useful work. Like for example, your lights, it's a load, right? It's a useful work for you because if you turn off the light, you, you want that whole part to be irri irradiated with light, right? So we, you, what do you say? You say the amount of power it uses to irradiate that surface versus the amount of power you're giving into that uh, light. That should be one. So that efficiency is full, 100%. That's what my point is. That's what they are telling. Efficiency of the voltage divider. That means how much amount of power is getting converted into the uh, load. So am I clear? Renesa and Desik W1. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Any doubts? Yeah, Dr. Yadav. No, sir, it is clear. Dr. Yadav, are you associated with uh, any industry or any... Uh, um... Actually, I am in the Kumar Okay, so what's your motive of taking this uh, uh, course? Sir, in, in our college, na, we have to uh, complete one, at least one course. Okay, oh, great, great. Okay, so shall we go one more question or is, is this enough information for you? I can solve one more question. Anyone? If you say no, I'll stop. If you want to solve more, I'm happy to solve more. I'm not getting any answers. 
should i solve more uh, you can do one more question sir okay let's do one more uh, sir one thing i would like to uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually if you upload the, the pdf of this discussion mm -hmm. uh, in the material itself as uh, we open our uh, course we go to the mm -hmm. course and we course so mm -hmm. uh, if you can upload your material mm -hmm. we do uh, uh, yeah yeah the pdf so you get this problem solving session over there in your uh, your no, that uh, is not uh, showing sir problem solving session not showing that's not showing let me see uh, maybe i think i not get to see Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, there is this. I'll I'll share my screen. Just okay. Okay, I can't share if I'm already sharing. Yeah. That would be helpful to us, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'll just show you. See, uh, there is this problem solving session, July twenty twenty three, available over here, right? You see this? You're following my cursor, right? Once you click over it, it takes you to this yes, sir, page. Yes, When you click on click here, it takes you to a Google Sheet. Here you will see all of yes, the sir, different. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Got it. Got it. Got it. This is my Swastik Sharma, and these are the YouTube videos that I have uploaded. Got it? Great. Yes. Sir. Let's continue. We will apply nodal analysis in this question. Oh, you already okay. Just a second. Let me open it. So we'll quickly do this because I have to turn it off by five fifty-five. There's another person's. Let's. So what? What will I do? I'll leave it to you. I'll give you hints on how to solve this question because I have to close this meeting. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do? It's 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 like the one question that we did earlier. Similarly, these two nodes will apply nodal analysis, right? And we need to find uh, power delivered by this voltage source. So we need current. So we already did one question, right? This question. Where did it go? This question. It's similar to this. It's just that instead of those two voltage sources at the two extreme nodes, you are given what? You are given a uh, current sources, and it would make your life much easier too because you have current sources. You can simply use those. Uh, Uh, nine ampere to input to that node instead of using V one minus thirty upon something, right? So sh I'll just write quickly what are the different nodal equations. So you can do you want me to solve it or just give you um, methods to solve it because I have five more questions. So if I can give you methods to solve it, kindly change the platform. Otherwise, we would have to rely completely on the YouTube video because today I missed most part. Oh. I'm sorry, uh, Renesa. It was not a pleasant experience for you, but I didn't know it won't work on your um, uh, device. Whatever we were given from IIT Kanpur, I just simply forwarded it to the TMRF team at NPTEL. But yeah, next time I'll use in, in Google Meet. I'll send them a uh, uh, an email and tell them that I'm shifting to Google Meet. Don't worry. I'm sorry it was a difficult experience, but yeah. So yes, uh, I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't care. Problem solving session PDF is not available. Video lecture PDF. Pro problem solving session what? Ah, please ah upload PDF as well as video. Ah, I'm unable to hear you. Can you speak a bit loud? Ah, sir, I I I I want to say say that. Do you upload PDF as well as videos, na sir? YouTube videos are there, sir. Yeah, YouTube. One column is of YouTube videos, right? And the other is a presentation folder link. If you open that presentation fold folder link, you will see three notes that are provided: week one, week two, and week three. Is it visible? Presentation folder. There. Yeah. So there are. I'll just quickly share my screen again. Yeah. Yeah, so it's visible, right? So you see, there are uh, this YouTube link and then this presentation folder link, right? When you open this, it is it is uh, showing blank, sir. 
it's showing blank. Yes, sir. Yes. I'll The open thing this. is. Yeah, yeah, I'll open it in front of you, right? I opened it. I see three notes, week one, not week two, week three. All by me, so it's not subscription, not subscription. Yes, sir. I will see it. But presently, here. Maybe, maybe, maybe your um internet connection is slow. It's there. It's there. Uh, Okay, I upload sir. it regularly. Okay, Yeah, okay, okay. I upload it regularly. Okay. Yeah, no worries, no worries. No, no, you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. So five minutes. Right. Let's quickly go through questions. Let's... Yeah. So yeah, uh, this question is fairly easy, right? You use nodal analysis on these two nodes. Solve it, and you'll get the answer, right? I don't want to jump the gun. If you want me to solve it, we can do it, continue it in the next session. But since you already have a week four assignment to submit, I don't want to uh, extend it further. Okay, so you, uh, this question is clear. If you have doubts, you can let me know uh, by writing me an email. So if you require an email, I can also help you with that. So I have added my email in the um, chat box. So you can send me uh, your questions too. I'll be happy to answer. It's not a... Okay, so this is done. Let's go through one more question. Yeah. Same question. Here we are required to find what is the... Uh, uh power supplied by this 4 ampere voltage source so you if you find the uh, voltage across it you can find the voltage source so what do you do you have three nodes v1 v2 v3 apply the nodal analysis and let's call it vs right this is so apply nodal analysis after applying nodal analysis you have three question three variables solve it you'll get v2 right Once you get V2, it becomes V2 is something like say X volts, right? Once you get V2, you just use KV, uh, KVL across this loop. It would be Vs minus 20 is equal to V2 or Vs is simply 20 plus V2, right? Once you get Vs, what you do? Multiply it by 4 and get the result. So power supplied by the 4 Ampere volt uh, current sources four into Vs. This is a very easy question, right? You, are, I've already to, uh, uh, solved one of these questions. I feel it's it will be very easier for you. If it's not, let me know. I'll give you the answers too. I'll give you the answers. So the answer for sixth question is T. And for this seventh question is D, right? So these are the two questions that you should do. Um, that you can do, and you you will be able to solve the week four assignment fairly easily. So, so tell me if you have doubts in this lecture. Anyone? Uh, sir, seventh question. Yeah. Can you show the equation? Yes, sir. So yeah, this this is the equation. So you get V2 by solving nodal analysis, right? V1, V2, V3, you will get, sir, delivered power polarity is positive. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it will be, it will be, we, we don't talk about polarity. If we are telling that it's being delivered, we, we forget, you, you just leave that uh, positive or negative from your uh, mind. You so when you say it's being delivered, you say 20 watts is being delivered, right? But if you write P is equals to minus 20, it means that 20 watt is being delivered. But when you are saying it's being delivered, you just write the magnitude of it. So that's what you're required to find the magnitude. Yeah, the other uh, Dr. Yadav, you were saying, uh, sir, I was saying from uh, V2, you are finding from nodal analysis. Yeah, V2, you will find from nodal analysis, right? V1, V2, V3, you apply KCL at all those three nodes and you'll get the um. Answer. Okay, so I I would have to close this meeting. So can 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 you please tell me if you got this, Doctor Yadav? Sir, just keep the slide open for one. Yeah, yeah, I kept it open.
So rest of you, you can uh, leave if you if you don't have any questions. So I have to close this meeting in one minute. Uh, the other scholar has to take. It's just one link for all of us, right? Sir, the last question my answer is coming close to two zero eighteen. Two zero eighteen. Two zero. Two zero eight. Two zero eight eight points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's between two zero seven and two zero nine. So the answer is D. Yeah, it's correct. Yes, Doctor Yadav. So. Okay, sir. Done. Yeah. Okay, great. So I hope you had a wonderful experience. Uh, if you didn't, you can just uh, email me if you have any doubts. I'll be happy to answer. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See you in the next week.